Uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there. Humans, these are things, have you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and hope you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. This is the video that I think I really need to make this week. This is the 10v10 support video. Uh, I played a lot of 10v10. I got the 200 kill event thing done on Asia. I streamed it and played it on NA, and then I came back to Asia and I played it some more. There are three big reasons why this mode needs to stay. Why I, in fact, think the game is better suited to this. And one of them is incredibly surprising for me, but it's probably the one that I think is going to be the little, well, a little controversial. I think 10v10 means that we finally have enough tanks for the map. That sounds crazy because Blitz is a 7v7 game and PC has enormous maps. Quadruple the size of Blitz easily with 15 tanks only. And we're putting 10 tanks in these tiny little maps. And here's what I say to that. PC can be incredibly boring, incredibly static, and features tanks that are quite often immobile for huge big sections of time. And just because they have larger maps does not mean that the maps are the right size. I played a lot of PC and I can tell you right now that one of the things that I had no idea um, Wargaming employees knew about was a video I made where I was playing PC and I made a video basically singing a song bemoaning how static it was and there was a lot of giggles and laughter in the wargaming office and this went around a few people because like i was at events and they're like oh you're the guy who sang that song <laughs> like what who are you and there were four or five tanks left two and versus three whatever there was artillery on one team sitting at the back of the map and there were TDs and everyone just held choke points for the last five or six minutes of the game and it ended in a draw and there wasn't a tank spotted on the map for either side for that entire time. Blitz is incredibly different to that. Blitz is all about speed and energy and aggression. We played 10v10. There was no lack of speed, energy and aggression. And the maps felt perfect. They did not feel too small. They did not feel like they were second-class citizens and that they were just not suited to this kind of a makeup. That, that was something that really surprised me and something that I will go to the wall for. This is the right amount of tanks for these maps. Secondly, there were far, far, far fewer ruffle stops. There were also, for me at least, far fewer moments where I carried 1v3 or had massive kolobanov like moments, 1v2. There are just, it's a lot harder to do um, those kind of late game heroics, 1v4, when you've been through this many tanks. And it's almost Darwinian in that the last tanks left are generally people that know what they're doing, which is crazy. It's not always like that in 7v7. But more than that, if you were on a normal game in a 7v7 match on this map, Hellas, and one team sends five or six tanks to the medium flank, you're stomped, you're done. In this game, they can send half the team to the medium flank uh, and that'll be five tanks. And if there's six or seven tanks from the other team there, that doesn't mean you're going to get whomped. Hell, if you've got four tanks on the medium flank and six tanks on the heavy flank, you can still hold effectively. And I found nearly universally, there just was so few moments where 10 tanks went one way. Unlike in Blitz 7v7, where if five tanks go one way, generally the last tank or two one of them will be like a TD sitting in the back and the medium will be on his own on a flank and he'll be like, don't have any choices here. I've got to leave. I've got to go. I can't hold this alone. And he'll leave. 
And so you'll end up in these games where you get this clockwork gameplay going on and one team will get there first and kill the other one. Like slowly attrit them or whatever. This felt so often like you were able to hold. Like there was enough tanks around for you to hold and that the game was just the right pace. And I can't really give you the exact reasoning behind it, but it just felt like the right pace. And that was so much fun for me. It was so much better. It, it's also finally something I want to talk about, the sample size. When you have seven players, the ability for, oh, that is the one thing that I hated about it. They weren't particularly effective, but Sheridan missile tanks, like getting shot by a guy who was behind a hill is so annoying. And they are the dumbest things in the game and I don't know why they're back. Anyway, I digress. There, there is, if you've got one really, really good player, right? On a team of seven, he can have a huge effect. If he's on a team of 10, that dilutes the effectiveness to a degree, but it also dilutes the stupidity. If you have a 35% player and bearing in mind in 7v7, you will get a 30% win rate just by turning up. You can be AFK and still get a 30% win rate. But if you have a 35, 40% player who doesn't know what they're doing, limited amounts of battles and have risen to the top, the odds are the other team is gonna have one. There's 10 tanks. But even if they don't, you can limit their effectiveness and it is far easier to deal with. I am not saying that this mode is idiot proof, but one of the great lies about statistics is small sample size. When you're able to put an extra three tanks in there, that's nearly 50% more vehicles in the game than there is when it's 7v7. And that gives you a better chance. I know it sounds crazy, but there is a better chance of it being an even Stevens game. I played this nearly exclusively when it was available. Nearly exclusively. World of Tanks PC is a great game. I've got thousands of battles in it, but I play nearly exclusively light tanks over there because I hate artillery. I hate the static nature of the gameplay for the most part. I hate the amount of bushes that they have where you can just sit at the back. This... This gameplay, this mode, made it seem more Blitz, not more PC. It just made for more engaging battles with more to do. And it probably favors players who have a better understanding of the gameplay mechanics and the way the games work. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Overall, I just feel less ruffle stomps, the right amount of tanks for the game, and God, I mean, it's a monumental shift. It's a seismic shift. It is It is the kind of thing that, you know, is, is very intimidating to even think about as a, a gaming company. But I just think it would be so much better if Blitz had more 10v10. Uh, I'm not going to do a full review on this tank either. Uh, this is the Tier 9 light tank, the German KPZ-70K. I was lucky enough to play this tank uh, on stream the other day and I really love light tanks. I think it's no surprise that I'm probably more disappointed because of the way this tank has been introduced than most would be. Uh, I was saving the credits on my personal account, to, the gold on my personal account to crack at this thing and the implementation, this Einfest stuff, and the whole idea of having to earn a currency. Like, it ended up, if you wanted to buy this tank, you, the only way you could get the tokens was through bundles that you bought. And it was literally going to cost, like, 400 US dollars or something stupid. And it's just not that good a tank. Like, it's a fine tank. It's a tier 9 German light tank, which we don't have in the game apart from this. And that was really upsetting to me that there was an opportunity as someone who's primarily driving T100 LTs around all day long 
and whose favourite tank to drive is probably right now the T100 LT and is always light tanks like Bat Chats or LT432s or RU251s or HWK30s or Sentinels or Swindlers. Like those are the tanks I love driving. I love light tanks. And this is just wild. It's slow for a light tank. Uh, really slow. And sluggish for a light tank. It doesn't have insane camouflage for a light tank. It's got reasonable camouflage. And the amount of money is absolutely nuts to, to buy this thing. It's wild. Now, the coin flipper, that is something that I've hilariously always said to people before is you don't have to buy it. And I agree, that is so true. You don't have to buy this tank. But I suspect that very few people did. And I think that's a shame. I, I, I think we need more light tanks in the game at higher tiers, not less, especially if it goes to 10v10. Light tanks in 10v10 are more light tanks than they are in 7v7. There are way more opportunities to get spotting damage in 10v10. On particular maps, uh, there are incredible amounts of spotting damage on offer. Like, if you're looking at Oasis Palms, for instance, there are opportunities on that map when you get strong-sided on the medium flank to hold the dunes just under the cap and give huge amounts of spotting damage. And I really have done that quite a bit, particularly in T100 LTs who don't have the gun depression to do anything there, but can be so influential in the game. And this is an opportunity to have a high tier light tank in the game, which I think would be really, really cool. And we just didn't get it. Anyway, look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield. And as always, bye for now, you grubs.